Thank you for stopping by, guys, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Today, we're going to be looking at a new tank design. This is the main battle tank, Mark 18. This design is a spiritual successor to the Mark 13 to hopefully finally retire it. The Mark 13 is quite an old tank at this point, but it's been a very good and very reliable tank, and that's why I've kept it in use and in service as long as it has been. Hopefully, this tank will finally put that to rest, however. This takes a lot of details from tanks like the Mark 16 and the Mark 13 to try and make what is my best tank so far. Let's go ahead and take a bit of a closer look at it. Let's go go ahead and take a look around as well. It takes a number of features from the Mark 13, like the loader position and the anti-air gun and the track design, as well as features from the Mark 16, like the gun design and such features like that. Let's go ahead and get in it. And this tank also has its own aiming system. It is a bit, not aiming system, I should say, cannon movement system, which is a bit different than all of the other tanks I've made so far. So quickly, the controls for driving, like everything else, is your normal W, A, S, and D, like you'd expect it for a tank drive. Let's get up here to a little bit of a clearing, and then we'll talk about the cannon. The cannon, like always, steers and controls the way I always do it. So one is left, two is up, three is down, four is right, five fires the main gun, six fires your coaxial. And if you're in the loader's position over here, one is your turret left, two is up, three is down, four is right, five is a switch that turns the cannon on. Press five again, turn it off. Six raises your seat up so that you're in an AA position so you can see targets in the air and shoot at them effectively. Let's go ahead and turn that off and put it back in its default position, its resting position. There we go. Loading the cannon can be done from either the loader's position or the driver's position by taking your cardboard, clicking on the bearing, dragging, and placing your round. Round should be placed at the top. From here you can aim and fire. Let's, let's aim for that tree right there. Okay. So the loader position and the turret, like I said, was from the 13. This cannon design with the bearings was brought from the 16. Um, as a result, this tank is a bit shorter while also giving the turret and the gun very good traverse up and down. However, it does mean that the cannon pops out slightly, but with the armor that's on top of the actual gun, it does still protect the explosive canister inside the chamber. One of the big features, or I should say two of the big features that make this tank special is its driving is boosted to be a bit faster and more balanced. The Mark 13 and the Mark 16 had good driving systems, but they were a bit slow. Uh, the There was a Mark 13 variant that I used for some of my tank battles known as the Bastion, which had a faster drive system. This was meant to improve off of that. And one of the big changes is how the gun aims up and down. Up until now, I've pretty much always used controllers for moving the cannon up and down. The problem with that is, is while it does stay in position, which makes it really good for long range, it only moves in one degree increments, which means it's a very slow up and down movement. You can get faster movement if you go to something like a three or four degree. However, at most ranges, it gives you a lot of gives you a lot of dead space in between. Every four degrees it makes a lot of difference if you're trying to aim for a specific component on a vehicle, or the vehicle's hidden behind a hill. Right, it can be really, really hard to hit them if you don't have a low enough degree, like a one degree or two degree. This system gets rid of the controllers entirely and actually uses electric engines. So there's one engine here and the other engine here. So what it seems like is happening 
from what I could tell, is the electric engines have a minimum speed. As long as they are able to move, they will move at this minimum speed. So what's happening is one bearing is rotating when you press a button, and the other one is creating friction, which slows it down to the minimum speed, which is fast enough you can get your cannon on target quickly, but it's also slow enough and it has enough degrees of motion, or it has an infinite amount of degrees it can stay at, to where if you tap the button, you can get very small increments. So if we you just tap the button, it'll bring down. The one downside to this is the cannon does need to be very balanced. That's why the barrel is much thicker and is made of metal. And if you don't have it perfectly balanced, which this cannon isn't perfectly balanced, the cannon will slowly aim either up or down, which will make it hard to do sniping style shots where you're shooting long, long distances, because the cannon will slowly get off its mark which can be a bit of an issue. Another upside to this is not only is it faster to get on target, you also have the ability that you don't you don't have the problem with controllers where they can bind up. So if I were to just smash this against the top of the tank, the controller would start to glitch out. But because these are electric engines, you don't have a problem. And if this is pressed against the top of my tank, as I rotate, the barrel won't snag on anything because as it hits blocks it'll move up and out of the way of whatever it's hitting which makes it also really nice in that regard so I think now that I've gushed over the features of this tank enough let's actually take it out and start shooting some things before I do that I need to make sure it's loaded there we go like I said there is a engine and driving difference so it is much faster And let's see if we can find a target. Due to the problem with these types of cannons and the fact that I haven't been able to develop the new Mentum cannons enough to use them in tanks, this tank can no or can still not shoot down, which has been a bit of an issue. So even if I wanted to, I could not hit that rock right in front of me. Even though I should be able to aim down at it, I won't be able to shoot at it. I can't aim down. A little bit forward, there we go. Now I can aim at it. But I'm not going to be able to shoot at it. Cannon will just shoot straight. So let's find something we can shoot at. Actually, we could shoot at it, we just have to get lower. But this is what I mean about getting on target faster. With the battle that I did with Armstrong, it was a major issue trying to get your cannon onto target. And it usually came down to whoever could get it on target the fastest. And that's one of the major reasons I did this, is while you do lose some accuracy at really, really long ranges, that medium to short range speed and reliability gives this cannon the upper hand. So if you ambush a target, you can quickly get your cannon on target to shoot at them before they can get it to on target to shoot at you. So, to try and give you an idea of what I mean is say, say you're coming along around this little hill here. As you crest the hill, you see the tank, you turn the tank, start firing, you need to go up, and fart. And it passed straight through the rock. Yay, scrap mechanic collisions. Or if your shot is off, you can quickly adjust. And for long range, let's say we want to hit that rock over there on the tip. I was a little low. My aiming was off. You do have to be a bit careful because this cannon does aim up a lot faster than previous versions. So you can actually pretty much aim to the sky before realizing it. Still a little low for what I liked. 
And with this cannon's ability to aim up and down, you can pretty much use this almost as a mortar. It doesn't go quite high enough to use it as a mortar, but you get a really nice degree. And if you just want to shoot it, it goes really, really far. See if we can see the splash. There it is. All the way back there in the fog. I can't actually see the ground it hit, unfortunately. So this is the main battle tank Mark 18. Hopefully this will put the Mark 13 to rest. Um, there are a few things I should note, mostly about the armor. The Mark 13 and its variants had a heat netting on the side of the turret. While this did add some protection from the sides, it dis did cause a lot of issues in the sense that when you were aiming at a target, it made you much wider and made you a bigger target. And oftentimes the heat net was what was struck, causing an explosion where if it wasn't there, it would have just been a miss. And if you saw the Mark 13 Bastion, which is what I used in Armstrong's battle, you would have noticed the experimental armor that it had on it. While the armor did seem to add some benefits to the tank, it did destroy the tank's camouflage, so it was removed in this version. However, remnants of that armor design are found inside the front of the tank. You can find it down here to add some protection. I didn't add it all around the tank because pretty much the only place you can get hit and have a round detonate safely is here at the front of the tank just because of the distance between the front of the tank and the actual crew compartment. Um, I think that is enough rambling for today. I am going to end this episode here. So if you did enjoy, please leave a like. And uh, I should also say the Discord is in the description. I have been doing a lot of work with tanks and a lot of community things with these tanks, like tank battles and such. And you can find a lot of details in the Discord if you want to do that. Um, I'm not going to do my normal outro. I think I'm going to actually change this up to just the normal. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.